This tutorial covers how to set up your T-Display with LMPOS and is divided in two parts. The first part covers what you need to buy and download and then the second part covers how you need to set it up. So let's begin. So first things first, you need the T-Display version of the ESP32 board. This is a pretty great board. It comes with a 1.14 inch um, IPS LCD, which is uh, pretty great for your invoices. It does the job well and it's also extremely um, affordable if you want to keep your prices low. Um, it also comes with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on, on board, which is going to be very important when we set it up. And then what's also really cool is that you can um, use a lithium polymer battery uh, once you're done flashing the device and the board comes with onboard charging. So once you run out of batteries, you can just charge the battery through the board, which is very convenient. Um, you also need a keypad of some sort. You can either get um, a membrane keypad, which is also very fairly inexpensive, or if you want something um, bigger, then you can get this matrix keypad. Whichever keypad you end up getting, just make sure that you know what the configuration of it is because it changes from uh, keypad to keypad, and this is going to be important uh, when you flash your board with, uh, with your code. All right, that's all you need to purchase onto what you need to download. So when you go to the T-Display uh, folder in the LMPOS page, you have all of the instructions here. First things first, you're definitely gonna need the Arduino IDE, which you can click on the link and it leads you here. Uh, just download the latest version of uh, Arduino. The next thing you're gonna need is to install your board. So uh, once you click on Boards Manager over here, it'll take you to this link where if you follow the instructions, um, you'll know exactly what you, what to do. But in a nutshell, you wanna copy this link over here, go to your Arduino software once it's downloaded, go to preferences and paste it over here. No problem if you already have something on there, you can just put a comma in and then paste it after that. And once you have this here and it's saved, you can go to tools, boards, manager boards, I think it is, and then uh, type in ESP32 and then install uh, install the board. Once you have that installed, the next thing you need is, well, <laughs> the code base itself. So when you navigate to the main page, you will be able to just simply click on code and then you can download the zip folder. Or if you're handy with uh, git commands and terminal commands, you can just clone it right to wherever you want it on your computer. And then the last thing that you need to download, and this is very important if you have a Mac, is you need this driver. Uh, once you click on that, it'll take you to this particular page. You go to downloads and then uh, in download and install this particular driver. Without this driver, the port for you to flash your ASP32 board won't show up. So you definitely need it. All right, that's all for what you need to purchase and download and install. Off to part two on how to set it up. So once you've unzipped your um, folder that you downloaded from the GitHub page, you want to navigate to the T-Display folder and then open up this .ino file, which will open up in um, Arduino. And then the next thing you wanna do is copy these libraries over into where your Arduino is gonna go looking for them. And the way you find that location is you click into Arduino, go to preferences, and you'll find the sketchbook location right here which you can reconfigure easily uh, from clicking into browse. So let's navigate to where my uh, library folder is. So we're in documents, Arduino, and then this is where you want to copy these libraries over to. Um, I did them early, so they're already there. Once you have the libraries copied over, the next thing you want to do is make sure you've selected the correct board. The way you do that is go to tools, go to board, go to ESP32 Arduino, and then select that version of the board. At this point, if you haven't connected your computer to the ESP32 board, you should do that because we wanna make sure that we've configured the correct port. Um, and the way we do that is go to tools, port, and select the USB to UART port. Um, if you can't see this, then maybe you haven't downloaded the correct driver or you forgot to download the driver, so, uh, especially if you're on a Mac, so make sure you uh, check back on that. Um, the last thing that we wanna do is make sure that we have our pinouts configured correctly 
and you can do that by finding pinout and uh, look at that right here. I'm going to hit upload real quick because it's going to take a couple of seconds and then I can talk about the configuration for this. So this is the configuration for uh, the way that I have soldered my membrane keyboard to the ESP32 board. Uh, yours could be different. Um, again, it depends on what uh, sort of keypad or um, membrane keypad you bought. You will for sure find the configuration of whatever you purchased, either wherever you purchased it or just even on this site. And this will tell you what the rows and the columns are and that's what you want to configure right in here. Let's wait for this to upload. All right, my code is now uploaded and um, I'm gonna now restart my ESP32, press one of these buttons and the app is launched. So let's head over to accessing the portal and configuring our ESP32. Once your app is launched, it's gonna show up as one of the networks available to you. Um, but if we go back, just to recap for a sec what the LNPS even enables, it is online lightning payments and offline lightning payments, non-chain payments and offline lightning withdrawal uh, if you wanna configure it to be an ATM. And for all of this, we actually need some information first before uh, inputting it into um, configuring this, the LMPOS device. So I'm gonna go find the information for this first and then join the network and put it in. So in order to get some of that, I'm gonna go to legend.lmbits.com, uh, just create a new wallet, uh, I'm going to call this wallet orange. And once your wallet is created, in order for um, it to have the, um, the online lightning payments functionality, you want to copy the invoice read key. So I'm going to copy that and then paste it into text edit. There we go. And then for uh, some of the LN URL stuff, you want to initially um, add or enable the extension. So once we go there, we want to enable the LN URL device. Uh, once that is enabled, it'll show up to the left. And once you click into that, in order to create an instance, uh, you click there. Um, I'll just name this point of sale, POS. The wallet is my orange wallet. And then select whatever currency you want. I'm going to select Canadian dollar. Um, select that it's a point of sale system. And then if you want to enter a profit margin, you can do that. I'm just going to put zero for the point of sale device and then create the instance. So once the instance for the point of sale is created, if you click right here, it'll show you the LN URL device device, LN URL device device stream. Oh, there we go. It is twice. Uh, if you click that, it'll copy. And then you want to go into your text edit, paste that again. And then if you also want to configure your ATM, you create a new instance again, name it what you want to name it. The wallet is the same. So you can, if you create more than one wallet, uh, you can make, you can have the ATM withdraw from a different wallet and then the point of sale or deposit from a different wallet. So I'm going to select orange for now. And then let's make the ATM uh, currency USD. Select that and then ATMs usually have uh, profit margin added to them of some sort. So I'm going to put 5%. And then this creates the ATM instance. So if I click into that, that's what I want. I'm going to paste that in here. Um, and then for the on-chain functionality, you actually want um, an XPUB so that it creates new addresses that you get Bitcoin sent to. And I'm going to go to iancoleman.io bit39 to generate a dummy XPUB. But um, if you want it to get sent directly to your hardware wallet or a software wallet that gives you uh, the XPUB, then that's what you well, that's what you need to enter. So here, if you generate uh, a new mnemonic phrase, scroll down, it's going to show you the, um, the public key. And that's what you want. You want to copy that and paste it into your text edit again. So this is all we need in order to configure the LN, LNPOS device. So now I'm ready to connect to it. Um, and that's going to show up when your, your app is launched on your device. And make sure that it is still connected to your computer or some sort of power source because this is emitted 
uh, from your ESP32. Okay, so uh, this is it right here. If you want it to be um, connected to the internet, then you can configure, configure it right here by putting in your SSID and then your password. But what we wanna do right now is configure the point of sale options. So once you navigate to that, um, you, uh, you gotta fill in some of this. So let's start from here. This is the on-chain option. So this is where the XPUB goes. Um, oops, okay, there we go. I'm gonna make this smaller if I can or not. Oh, that's annoying. All right, let's do that. Okay, so the XPUB is what I want. I'm gonna copy that and paste it right here. Uh, the server is legend.lnbits.com. If you're running your own server on Umbral, then you can put um, that address or information here. Then the wallet invoice key is the first thing that we copied. So that's this. I'm gonna copy this and paste it in here. And then the point of sale currency I put as Canadian dollar, the ATM currency I changed. So that's that. Um, and then the offline lightning option, that's your uh, LNURL POS instance that we created. So that's right here. I'm gonna copy that over. And then the ATM string is also the second instance that we created. So there we go, copy it and then paste it over. Um, if you have um, a mempool.space server link, you can put that in there and then you can also, uh, conf this is for the ATM pin, you can change that to whatever you want. Once you've configured the POS options, hit save and um, this is a good sign. This essentially means that everything was saved the way that it was supposed to. So now your ESP32 is configured and let's head over to our board to test it out. All right, so I just uh, restarted the board, which should now be configured. Oh, there we go, all four options available. So you can navigate uh, wherever you want using the star, and then let's test one of these out. So and then you have POS. Um, I wanna create an invoice for 222. Create an invoice, there you go. This should be able to, or this, this can be scanned by any Lightning wallet. Uh, once someone pays the invoice, they get a confirmation um, pin essentially. And if they get the same pin as you get, that's when you know that you did get paid. And that's really important as a merchant. So let's go past this page. Um, let's try the on-chain functionality. So if we go in, so you can, you know, this is one way to make sure that you have the correct XPUB, but if you want the address, then someone can just scan this and send you whatever on-chain payment um, you have asked them to send you. And then this is how you can check whether or not it has been sent. So open this in any block explorer and it should show you. Um, let's try the ATM, whoops. So LN URL ATM, oh, this is the pin that was set. So that's 878787. Remember you can configure this to whatever you want. Um, and I did set this currency to USD, which again, you can set to whatever you want. If someone wants to withdraw 90 US dollars to their own Lightning wallet that much. So this is essentially uh, what they can scan and then receive 90 US dollars worth of sats. And there you go, that's it.